Hey, you guys, this is Jerry Mateo with RecordingSoftware.com. Remember to check out the link in the description below where you get an awesome deal on these four plugins we're featuring in today's video. Hey, you guys, welcome back. And today we have a really cool bundle that we're going to be featuring. This is going to be a custom all fab filter bundle. And I created this bundle with the idea of what are the top fab filter plugins that I use the most? And those are the Fab Filter Pro MB, Fab Filter Saturn, Fab Filter Pro Q2 and the new Fab Filter Pro L2. Each one of these is very unique and sounds really cool. The Pro MB is basically a multi-band compressor, but an interesting thing is let's say I go to the B section and I highlight all of these and I delete them. I can create bands that are not actually linked to anything. I can also go to this expert view and select free mode on the bands and I can actually make each band be triggered by whatever frequency I want. This can be an expander or a compressor upwards or downwards, so you can make this gate something out or even make it boost up the signal when the signal drops below something. It's really powerful and really, really intuitive. You also have different modes. You have look ahead, you have different analyzers, you have sidechain filters, oversampling, and you have linear phase, dynamic, and minimum phase modes. The next one is the Fab Filter Saturn. And this is a lot like the Pro MB. If I go into the B section, you can see that this is a single band or multi band saturation plugin and you have three tubes, three tapes, five different amps, smooth, crunchy, lead, screaming and power amps, two saturations, smudge, rectify and destroy. Now these last three are really creative. Let me just show you what smudge sounds like. We'll solo up the bass. Let's go rectify and then destroy. So really cool, really interesting. An awesome thing too is that each band will actually have full-on control over the tone EQs, the drive, dynamics, and the feedback and frequency. You even have a mix knob. So let's say we go here, we can destroy this. We can also reduce the dynamics by putting this all the way to the right. And that basically will increase the impact by making it hit the dynamic section really hard. If you do it all the way to the left, it basically adds a lot of dynamics to it. So let's say you have a ringing snare. If you find the frequency that has a lot of ring to it, you can bring it all the way down. It'll actually help reduce that while you can bring the frequencies that you like to have distortion into the forefront by dragging them up. After that, we have the Pro Q2. This is a really cool EQ. It allows you to either link nodes by frequencies or notes. You have a ton of shapes such as bells, high and low shelves, high and low cuts, notches, bandpass, and tilt shelves. You have slopes, which means that you can either have a normal uh, EQ band or you can make it more square and you can have pretty extreme settings. You can also link the cues. So basically, as it gets wider or shallower, it'll make it thinner or sharper. You can also customize this to match whatever type of workflow you want. The cool thing is this is able to do zero latency, natural phase, and linear phase, and all of this is fully automatable. It could be mid-side, left or right, mid or side, or just left, right, or mono. After that, we have the Pro L2. This is the newest version of their limiter series. It has a bunch of new modes. You have modern, bus, and safe. Safe is extremely invisible, and make sure that you don't get any overs at all. Bus is more gentle and has a lot more character. Modern has this very modern mastering style limiter sound where it kind of lets the initial peaks sound like they're going through even though they're being limited. You have true peak limiting now. You have oversampling all the way up to 32 times oversampling, which is ridiculous. You have your dithering, you have your true peak limiting, and then you also have a new DC offset filter, which basically adds a little DC offset filter at the Nyquist frequency in the low end, and that will help even out your waveform and prevent unwanted wobbling in that frequency. You have this one-to-one -one button, which basically allows your input and output to be gain matched so you don't actually uh, get tricked by loudness. Anyway, let's get straight into this. I've used these four on this bass track, so let's bypass it, and I want you guys to listen to how the bass sits in the mix without any processing. So here we go. Right, it kind of sounds a little bit dull, almost like it doesn't fit. Let me solo it up and let's listen to it. You can hear it's moving around and it's different frequencies are really, really uh, kind of shifting in balance of what's sticking out. So if I turn on the Pro MB, 
You can see that I've balanced it out. And then I've used the Saturn using the dynamic control by driving the low end to be less dynamic. Doing the same thing with the mid range and on the high end, I'm kind of gating it in a way, but making it extremely dynamic. We'll turn this on. I'm just kind of making it drive a little bit more. Then I'm using the Pro Q2 to kind of cut where the kick drum is and boost a little bit over it. And then I'm limiting it. You can see how nice and clean this is. I'm doing only a little bit of limiting, but it's very, very consistent and it never sounds unnatural. So let's listen to this in the mix. You can notice it always is audible. And then with the bypass, you can see how it kind of disappears. Especially right there. Yeah, so let's go maybe around here. And then with it off. And see how it kind of loses its impact. Now imagine if you have something like this on a mix bus or as your final output limiter, this would be a great touch. I'm being very aggressive, except with the EQ, to obviously show you guys how this works. But as you can see, it sits in the mix very well and it takes very little effort. All you have to do is really click and drag and the UI looks great. So you never have to worry about straining your eyes. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. Remember to check out the link in the description below. This is Jeremy Mateo with recordingsoftware.com and I'll see you guys next time.